So let's go back again. Value divided by random one ten. There we go. Okay, so that was a little sidetrack thingy. Show you what you can do, but it didn't look that great. And uh, let's see here. Hopefully, I'm not boring some of you people there, because I'm sure the, the the whiny Wendy pansies out there are probably oh, he's talking to us, taking too long. Oh, bite me. Um, sorry. Anyway, let me get just get a quick drink here. When you talk so long, your voice gets dry, and you know I've got such a wonderful voice. Okay, so the next part is um, we're going to adjust the color of our um, actual clip here. So let me. Um, uh, turn off all, all the other layers. So we, ju we just have the video clip here. And instead of putting the uh, color correction on my... Um, let's get rid of the slider there. Um, instead of putting the color correction on the actual video clip, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to apply it to a uh, an adjustment layer. So click New, second one from the bottom, Adjustment Layer. I'm making sure I put this just above my uh, video clip because the adjustment layer will affect every layer that's below it. And seeing as how I only want it to affect the the video clip, um, I'm just going to put it above the video clip. And yeah, you'll see in a second why I'm, why I'm using that adjustment layer. So right click and go to color correction, hue saturation, click on colorize, and I'm going to turn this to a nice yellowish, you know, kind of faded out 70s look old film type of thing. I'm going to adjust the saturation. That's a little too much. That's not enough. So somewhere around, you know, maybe 35. Color lightness you can bring up or bring down however you want. I just leave it at zero. Now a good thing about adjustment layers is that it, even though it has nothing on it, it's not like a solid layer where it has an actual color to it, an adjustment layer has all the attributes of a normal layer. So you can use any of its transfer modes, you can use the track mats, uh, you can, you know, it's got transparency, scale, position. Um, so if I take the, uh, you know, take the uh, adjustment layer and move it out of the way, you can see the color, you know, let's, let me bring up the saturation. You can see, you know, the actual physical layer is being moved around. Let me turn that down to 35. Actually, let's just undo. There we go. Okay, so now we have the nice uh, kind of, you know, old film look here. Then go to our mode and turn it to add. And now we can have that nice, you know, burnt out look. Maybe they're like in a hot desert or something. Um, yeah, yeah, like the old, old cowboy films were like, they're in a hot desert and it's kind of blown out because the film is really cheap and, you know, they, they, they can't adjust the lighting really well. So, you know, we can fix this by just going into its opacity and bring it down a little bit so you still have that that yellowish color but it's still kinda got that you know whole burnt out burnt out look to it so let me just bring up the saturation a little bit and yeah, lightness maybe yeah you know play with it okay and I'm gonna create a new solid and I'm gonna make this one black and this is gonna be our vignette and we're gonna make this just above the adjustment layer because we don't want our adjustment layer affecting uh, our vignette. And go up to our uh, mask tool, click on the ellipse, and then make sure your black solid is cl uh, your vignette is selected. Double click and select the actual. It says masks. Make sure that's selected and hit the M twice, and it brings up all your mask attributes. And let me just rename these here. Vin yet I have no idea how it's, how, it's, how it's spelled. And those are all. Let me get rid of the white solid here because we don't need that anymore. <coughs> so what we're going to do here is uh, right next to the add and it's, and it's uh, transfer mode, hit invert. And let's go to feather and we're really going to feather this out. And opacity, we're going to bring down the opacity. And this little box here that's uh, between the 100% and uh, and your actual time slider time, there's like a little dotted box with a corner hacked off, and that's your actual uh, a mask outline. If you don't want to see it, just click that, and it turns off your mask outline. 
so I can see my vignette a little bit better. So let's darken this up a little bit. I'm just going to play to adjust it, you know, feather it, feather it out a little bit more. There we go. That looks cool. Okay, so now the thing is we got to do is we've got to, uh, you know, take everything and we've got to kind of transform it from this old, you know, old video, old film look back to its original, you know, original form. So what we're going to do here is I just want to go back and, and just take a look at this really quick. Maybe I'll put the vignette on top, see what it looks like. Nah, I like it at the bottom. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to uh, right-click, create a new null object, and this null object is uh, going to be our slider. And just leave that at the top, and we're going to right-click, and go for Expression Controls Slider. Now, we're going to multiply our slider onto every one of our attributes that we want to remove. And um, I'll explain why we're doing how we're doing this in a second. So let's go down to our um, our clip, and to see your your expressions or your keyframes, just hit the U button, and it automatically brings up uh, your your expression or whatever keyframes you have there. And I'm going on an hour. I'm very sorry. Um, so what we're going to do here is we have to get rid of this random expression. So your object goes back to its normal you know position or scale or opacity. So what we're going to do is um, let's see here that position da, 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 da. we should be able to just multiply by zero no because that would uh, screw that up there I'll have to come back to this one because I can't remember how I did that one. So let's go to our splotch, open up our expressions, and uh, the value of our slider is zero. So if we multiply this value by our slider, Take the pick whip, pick whip the slider. It completely erases any attributes, so the splotch will be gone from from our frames. Now, what we have to do is just take the slider, turn it to one, and your splotch will reappear because you take the x and y position value, multiply it by one, you get your x and y position value. If you multiply it by zero, when we animate our slider it no longer exists, it's no longer there. Um, so that's, that's how we're going to work it. But seeing as how we really don't need the position, all we have to do is just make it disappear. We can uh, just apply this slider to the opacity or the transparency of whatever object you know we're trying to affect or whatever layer we're trying to affect. So let's go to the uh, transparency and value random blah 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 and at the end we'll just multiply it and go to slider don't worry about that pick whip the slider it's at one oh what happened there oh somehow I, I erased it there we go okay let's right, try it again there we go. So the opacity is at one. One times the random value is whatever that random value is. So let's go to our scratches. And our opacity for our scratch is at 40%. Um, but if we, we can alt click so we get our pick whip. If we pick whip our slider value and um, which we're gonna, it's gonna remain at one. Our opacity will automatically go down to one. So that's a problem. We want it to stay at 40. Uh, 